Chapter 8 of The Way of Perfection. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The Way of Perfection by St. Teresa of Avila. Translated by the Reverend John Dalton. Chapter 8. She treats of the great advantage of being disengaged, both interiorly and exteriorly, from all creatures. We now come to the disengagement we ought to have with regard to created objects, for in this everything consists, if it be perfect. Herein I say everything consists, because when we adhere only to the Creator, and heed not any creature at all, His Majesty infuses virtues into souls, so that by doing little and little what we can, we shall have much less to encounter. For our Lord will take our part against the devils and against all the world in our defense. Think ye, sisters, it is a slight benefit to obtain this great favor of giving ourselves up entirely to Him, and not by parts and parcels, since, as I have said, all things are comprised in Him. Let us praise Him exceedingly, my sisters, that He has assembled us in this place, where no other discourse, save this, is held. But I know not why I mention this, since all of you who are here may teach me, for I acknowledge that, in so important a matter, I have not the perfection I could wish, and which I know to be necessary. Of all the virtues, and of what I am here speaking about, I say the same, viz., that it is much easier to write about them than practice them, and even in this respect I may not succeed well, for sometimes the skill of writing consists in experience, so that if in anything I speak properly and correctly, it must be by guessing from what I have experienced myself in the opposite to these virtues. As to the exterior, people already see how disengaged we are from all things. It seems our Lord wishes that we, whom He has brought here, should separate ourselves from everything, that so his majesty may draw us nearer to himself without any impediment. O oh, my Creator and Lord, when did I deserve so great an honor? It seems you have gone about, seeking by what means to approach nearer to us. May it please your goodness, that by our own fault we lose not this favor. O oh, my sisters, for the love of God, understand the great honor our Lord has done those whom he has brought here and let each one consider it well within herself, since among only twelve, his majesty chose her to be one. And how many better than myself do I know, who would joyfully take this place, but which our Lord bestowed upon me, who so little deserved it? Blessed be thou, my God, and may all the angels praise thee, and every creature also, for this favor can as little be merited as many others which thou hast bestowed upon me, my being called to be a nun was a very great favor, since, as I have been so wicked, thou wouldst not, O Lord, put any trust in me, for where so many good persons were assembled, my wickedness would not have been so evident, until the end of my life, and I should have concealed it, as I did in reality for many years. But thou, O Lord, hast brought me to a place where, as there are so few, it seems impossible that my wickedness should not be known, and that I may proceed with more care, thou takest away from me all occasions. I have now no excuse left, O Lord, I acknowledge it, and therefore I stand more in need of your mercy to pardon my offenses. What I earnestly request of you is, that whoever perceives herself to observe what is practiced in this house, would mention it before she is professed. There are other monasteries wherein our Lord is served, let such persons not disturb these few sisters whom his majesty has gathered together here. In other places, liberty is allowed of consoling themselves with their relations. But here, if any relations be admitted, it is done for their consolation. Let the nun, who desires to see her friends for her own comfort, and is not weary with a second visit, unless they be spiritual persons, consider herself imperfect. Let her understand that she is not disengaged from creatures, that she is not well, that she will not enjoy liberty of spirit, nor true peace, but that she stands in need of a physician. 
I say, that unless she be freed from it and be healed, she is not fit for this house. The best remedy I know of is, not to see her friends till she perceive that she is free from all attachment, and has obtained this favor from our Lord by frequent prayer. When she finds herself affected in such a manner that she takes it for a cross, I am willing for her to see them sometimes, in order that she may do them some good. For she will certainly be of some profit to them, and will not hurt herself. But if she have any affection for them, if their troubles afflict her greatly, if she willingly listen to their worldly prosperity, let her know that she will both hurt herself and not benefit them at all. End of chapter 8